What got me hooked on aquariums and terrariums back in the late 90s, yes, I am an older life form, was the fact that a well-scaped aquarium or terrarium or even a houseplant could transform the feel of a room or even the entire house. This sparked a lifelong obsession with nature and how to best integrate nature within our living space, be it at home or at the office. A little slice of nature is a refuge for the mind from the busy day-to-day -day lives that we lead. Greeting, 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 greetings life forms. Here are five ways to get nature into your space. I'll be rating these out of five based on the level of maintenance required for each specific one. Five out of five, meaning they require significant maintenance, while one out of five, meaning they require virtually no maintenance whatsoever on your part. Are you ready? Let's go! Number five, the common houseplant. There is a plethora of houseplants to choose from in almost every hardware and grocery store that I've ever been to. Even Ikea has a plant section, which I frequent every time I go there. Since there are so many and not all require as much of a green thumb as the others, here are a couple of hardy plant suggestions that you can find almost anywhere. There is the basic and hardy pothos, a vining plant that if set up right will easily overtake an entire wall, which I have had happen. And then there is the snake plant. The snake plant has a very interesting look to it. With broad thick leaves reaching up for the sky, it's very suitable as a corner plant or as an accent plant in an entire room. While these plants do not require much if any maintenance, please do thorough research before acquiring any such plant. Then there are the more delicate ones. The infamous misunderstood orchid, which can be found at a lot of grocery stores. Orchids are wildly misunderstood and some of the most discarded plants almost on the face of the planet. They are epiphytic plants, meaning they grow naturally attached to trees, which means that they do very poorly in soil. Due to the mass production of these plants, not everyone is aware of their care requirements. Please do thorough research. A well-placed plant or a congregation of plants can add a sense of serenity or a touch of natural chaos to any space. I'll give houseplants a rating of 3 out of 5 on the maintenance scale. Aside from consistent watering, houseplants require very little maintenance, unless you have a large collection, in which case you probably have a quarantine protocol. Number 4. Hardscape Material I have brought home countless pieces of driftwood, or interesting rocks, to use as bookends, or simply to display on the mantle. The various texture that exists in nature especially when combined with appropriate lighting, can make an amazing centerpiece, or even hung on a wall. And if you have an artistic eye, you could glue multiple hardscape materials together to create a small scene or a small scape. Something like the desktop waterfall that I made a while back comes to mind. These small pieces of nature will require virtually no maintenance, and are ideal for those who don't want the responsibility of taking care of a plant. I'll give Bear Hardscape a score of 1 out of 5 on the maintenance scale. Aside from occasional dusting, an arrangement or assortment of rocks and wood should require no maintenance on your part whatsoever. Number 3. Crystals, Rocks and Minerals Also, a little to no maintenance approach. And whether you believe in the spiritual significance or not, please argue in the comment section about this. We can all agree that they are a very aesthetically pleasing type of decor. With impressive specimens that can go for hundreds of thousands of dollars, visiting a local crystal store can be a very pleasant experience on its own. I like placing small rocks, minerals, or crystals in various areas on bookshelves, desks, or mantles. Coupled with a piece of driftwood on a shelf, you can make a little corner where you can go to recenter yourself. I will also be giving crystals, rocks, and minerals a score of 1 out of 5 on the maintenance scale. Hey Lifeforms, if you like this video so far and you want to see more like it, a sub to the channel would be greatly appreciated. And if you're already subscribed, boot the like button so this video can spread to more people. Thanks! Number 2. Aquariums Due to the sheer whimsy and mystery that a well-scaped aquarium can bring to your space, aquariums or planted tanks have a special place in my heart. The constant movement of fish combined with aquatic plants and intriguing hardscape can have you staring at the slice of nature for hours on end. 
Aquariums, however, can be a lot of work, depending on the choice of plants, fish, and other fauna life forms that typically reside within an aquarium. Some believe aquariums require loads of maintenance, between water changes and bi-weekly fish feeding and plant trimming, and some believe that you can set up an aquarium properly and never need to maintain it, which is highly debatable. You can also argue about this in the comments. And while one can argue that a well-established and well-automated aquarium can require very little maintenance due to the variability of both flora and fauna that is available in the hobby to a beginner, I would give aquariums a 5 out of 5 rating. But before you give me a piece of your mind in the comments, please do so anyway, hear me out. If bringing nature into your space is the goal, an unkempt ecosystem of greenery overgrown but thriving could be anxiety inducing and not very aesthetically pleasing, as opposed to a piece of nature art that one could fully appreciate. Algae will also build up over time and that requires some maintenance to get rid of. Number 1. Terrariums a long-time obsession of mine, a well-lit and well-placed terrarium can be the focal point of any room and can vary greatly in size, from large installations that can make you feel like this part of the room has been reclaimed by nature to small slices of nature preserved in a small mason jar. I had a small-ish terrarium on my desk at work. It provided me with a much-needed break from the endless snows of Ottawa. This life form is deeply obsessed with terrariums and might start selling ready-made terrariums and terrarium kits. Would you like to have a piece of the microverse in your space? Let me know in the comments below. Terrariums, however, do require almost daily maintenance, between misting, airing out, and making sure a new terrarium is established. Well, I have had this terrarium for about a year now. It is a silver lace fern on a bed of moss in a transparent vase. I have performed virtually no maintenance whatsoever since it was established. Then there are terrariums like the Nation of Crustacea that if gone unmaintained will turn into a semi-incohesive mess of intertwining flora. A well-established and well-automated terrarium will require little more than a plant trim when needed. I'll give terrariums a score of 4 out of 5 on the maintenance scale, the more elaborate, the more maintenance is needed to keep the aesthetics. But a well thought out and automated terrarium should get a score of 2 stars on the maintenance scale. Speaking of terrariums, if you want to see how I made this slice of paradise, click here. If you want to see me go on an adventure, here you go. And if you still haven't yet, click, click this button. Yeah, that one there.